So today on this introductory course for Final Cut Pro version 10.3, I'm just going to go into some basic sound adjustments. So I'm just going to move over to, um, this is a project we were working on before, but I'm going to go start working in, into a new one um, to begin working a little bit on some of the kind of um, most commonly used um, audio adjustments that you might come across. So I'm going to come up here to Arial. So this is a note just from, a, from an earlier one. We've got this project has been open previously, but I want to start working in this folder. So I have to click on the folder and then double click on the project that I want to start working in. So I'm going to bring a few clips down. Let's just use our, our E function. So they're just going to go end to end. Just get a few moments to kind of come into the screen. So we have a few of these that we're going to, going to start working with. Um, so we want to have like a little kind of introductory moment with our clips. We'll see how this happens. Here, so we've got a couple of our clips working here. Um, one sound adjustment is it's a slightly more advanced one, but I just want to give you this um, information um, as this is how I want to use the video. I'm going to synchronize the the, uh, the audio and the visuals. So I have filmed this interview, um, and at the same time I recorded the audio separately on a, on a Zoom recorder, Zoom H5. So I want to, to place this audio onto this video. Now, a very, very... Um, basic way of doing it would be to sort of bring the video down and to align this you can align it visually using the uh the sound waves you can kind of almost see them zooming in you can kind of pick these pick a point that's quite kind of clear and you can um synchronize them that way zooming out so the sound generally is happening kind of at the same time and you can bring that down and that's not bad that's pretty good um but I'm not going to do that because I kind of I want it to, to function quite quite practically. Come on, right. So I'm going to actually get uh, Final Cut Pro to sync them, and um, so I'm going to select the two portions. So select one, hold Command, and select the other one. And then I'm going to use it's the equivalent of right click on the mouse, or it's Control Select with the mouse, and it gives you that kind of drop down menu to the side. So just to kind of emphasize that one, either right click or Control Select. Now from here, we've decided we've got the audio we want, we've got the the uh, so the audio we want and the visuals we want, and we want to synchronize them. So we're going to select this option, which is synchronize clips, or you have the uh, keyboard shortcut here, which is Option Command and G. So you click this option here, synchronize clip. So I'm just going to sim uh, simplify that one. So I just might say interview sync. So I know that I'm using this this clip that has been synchronized. In the event aerial, I want the starting time code to be zero, and I want to use the audio for synchronization. The second option here is disable audio components on AV Clip. So what that means is do you want to disable the audio in this and replace it with this? You can leave it ticked or unticked because it's something which you can you can um, later come back to if you need to. But for now I do want to disable it because I just want to use the audio from the from the, uh, the Zoom recorder as opposed to, again, with a lot of these options, but your custom settings, if you want to be very particular about these because this is all more related to your, uh, your visuals, don't worry too much about that at the moment. So yes, I'm going to synchronize that and I'm going to click OK. It takes a moment depending on how long it is, depending on how different the sound sources are. If they've been filmed in different parts of the room, there might be a bit of delay, there might be a bit of echo, those kind of things. Um, or if they've been recorded at different bit rates and things, it can get a bit confusing. So I now have this clip here. You can see there's a little symbol here. This is, shows that this is our synchronized file. So if I play this... And after my last so this is now uh, a synchronized file. So this is the original file, and this is now with a good quality audio. So this, in the same way you can bring down any clip, you can just kind of click and drag it. If I bring this onto the timeline, you can see now, um, within the audio components of our inspector, this is, these are the options your audio configuration, and the storyline has just been deselected. If you reselect that again, that is where you then have the two audio portions playing simultaneously. So this is you when you have your uh, full training back in 2016. That includes the audio from the camera, the deselect storyline again. Full training back in 2016. And that's just the audio from the Zoom. So that's our synchronized clip. I just wanted to kind of show you that because it's uh, it's very useful. So I'm going to use this portion as opposed to these ones here. Um, so we're going to look at some some audio adjustments that might, you might want to uh, come into play. So we're going to create a little kind of mini mini promo. So 
so these all these clips I've just just put a few few clips on the on the um, on the screen and these are just basic jump cuts it's just literally gonna go probably quite abruptly from one into the other the music doesn't match it's all a bit mental so I might decide I want this portion put that at start I just want the moment where he walks around it's gonna be very very tiny this part here we does a nice spin going to be a kind of very rough introduction here maybe bring that in let's get another wee close up just so we can kind of work with it just get a nice spin this is up here not the nice just spin let's choose that word that's a nice spin let's work with that one so I'm just going to use end um, so we have a little introduction but what we're going to do is we're working with sound here, so I don't want to use the audio from this for our intro. The basic way, I'm going to go back to here so we can see our audio in a bit more detail. Actually, it's put even higher. So the basic audio adjustment is this volume bar. So as I hover over this line with my mouse, you can see that there's two arrows up here, one up, one down, and then the option of zero decibels and adjust volume. So if you click and drag this bar up or down, this is going to adjust the volume. You can see the decibels. It goes up to 12 and it goes down to infinity. Um, as I go up as well, if I just zoom in a little bit more, you should be able to see that the uh, sound waves start to go yellow and then red. That's when you're getting into peaking territory. So it means it's going to be the, um, the top portion of the waves are starting to get crushed and it's going to be quite painful to listen to, especially if you're listening in headphones. Um, it can happen quite a lot for things like claps or for things like live music and stuff. So you, you want to kind of keep that out of the yellows and the reds as far as possible because an occ occasionally it's quite natural for it to kind of be there for things like that and stuff but even then you still want to bring them down a little bit so it's more comfortable for your audience to listen to but I want to take the audio out of these completely so I'm going to bring in all of these oh, I'm I'm going to bring all of the volume on these right down another quick way of doing that actually is just if you want to br bring the volume down on one of them you do command C you can highlight everything else and do command shift V and paste the attributes. So you've made a volume adjustment and you want to copy it from here to here. So I want to paste my volume changes onto everything. So it's another way of doing it. Um, and I'm going to put this audio underneath. So I've taken in the original track that was used for the, for the aerial piece. And I'm going to drag a small portion of that because I don't need the whole thing. Just underneath. Even that <laughs> is quite long. Let's drag that right in. It also has a load of peaking. Let's see how long this lasts. There's a bit of silence at the beginning, which I don't want to use. I want it to come straight in with... Actually, it has a sound at the beginning, not music. Let's bring that in. This is a sound, so I want to bring this to about here. Let's see how that sounds now. There we go. <laughs> Starting to build a small video here. I know we're working on sound, but you do need a few of these moments to kind of get you started. Let's put that close up in here. Let's see how that looks. Very, very abrupt. So yeah, that's very short. I'll cut this one. So you can start to get into your sort of musical timing, cutting it to the sound waves and getting these kind of cuts to happen at nice moments. We've got this happening here. Um, so what I want to now do, so that's the kind of volume, so these are basic volume adjustments here. So this one, again, I might even bring this down a little because I can see it's starting to go into the yellow, so I want it to be a bit more comfortable to listen to. The main thing I want to work on here is how we get our interview to start to kind of come in. So I'm going to have this as our backing track, so let's continue this on here. But we want our interview to start to come into play, so I'm going to take in a little bit of Jason. Let's find something nice for him to see. Come on, for us to zoom in. I, I feel like I wouldn't add on much to it, I would probably just fine tune it. Um, but at the end of the day, I am really satisfied with it. I am really, really happy with how it turned out. That's enough. Um, Let's work with that. So we've got a nice little selection there, and we're going to pop this here. So we want this um, portion of the interview to kind of start to come in. We're going to use one of our J cuts. 
So I'm going to double click on this portion here. Now rather than extending the audio out, because this is the audio that I want to begin with, I want to begin with what he's saying. So what I'm going to do instead is to pull the visuals in a little bit. So I'm going to bring the visuals and I'm going to pull them in. So the, video is, so the visuals start later, but the audio starts sooner. So as you come in here, it's going to be quite loud with the other audio underneath. So that's already, you can hear this, this audio under, underneath is way, way too loud. We want to be, be able to hear the audio before this, this occurs. Also, that comes right in as he has a bit of a strange expression. So let's pull that in a little bit more. Um, so what we want to do is we want this audio here to drop a little bit. But we want it to continue. So we don't want to take the entire volume down of the whole clip. We want it to be nice and bold as it begins. But we want it to dip when we start to hear him speak. So we're going to add a thing called keyframes. In order to do that, you use the um, it's the Option key. So you hold down the Option or the Alt key, depending on the keyboard. Um, and as you can see, when I hold down the Alt key, this this changes from the up and down arrow into uh, your your A selector with a little um, little cross in the square. So as I do this, when I select, it creates a little dot. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add maybe four of these actually. Four is usually a quite quite a good number for transitioning in both in and out or something. So these are um, called keyframes. And what they do is they give instructions to Final Cut as to what where um, a particular where the volume is at that point and where it is at the second point, where it is at the third point. Um, they can be used for a variety of different functions and they they can be used for um, visual effects and transitions and um, crops and all that kind of thing. But we're looking at audio to begin with. So this, what, we're what we're telling Final Cut is at this point, the volume is negative two decibels. But we want, at this point, we want the audio to be lower. That's quite a lot. Let's say negative 22 decibels. It seems like quite a lot. And we want, but now we've t told it that it's back up at negative two here, which means that it's going to transition back up again. So I want this one maybe to also be down at around 22. And if I undo both of those, there's another way of doing that. You can take this bar that exists between them and drag that down as well. So there's two ways of doing that there. And what that's telling you here is that at this point, well, negative 25, from here, it's at negative 2. Then it starts to transition to this point where it is negative 20. Stays at negative 20 all the way to here. It's negative 20 at this point. It begins to change. And at this, by this point, it's now negative 2. So let's just have a little listen to that and see how that goes. And that's negative 2. That's still quite abrupt and it kind of... It, drops too quickly before he comes in. I'm going to lift up his audio, just maybe a little bit, and I'm going to transition it a little bit closer to him, and maybe not quite as much. So maybe bring it down to about negative 14 and see how that sounds. I, I feel like I wouldn't add on much to it, probably... It's not too bad. Bring it down slightly, and maybe bring him up a tiny bit more so you really hear what he has to say. So let's just give that play. I, I feel like I wouldn't add on much to it. I would probably just fine tune it. Um, but at the end of the day, I am really satisfied with it. I am really, really happy with how it turned out. There you go. And then at this point, where the where the, the visuals start to transition back in again, that's maybe where you might have a little bit more of the clips. So let's just take a small portion, find something quite dramatic. We had a lovely spin. Let's work with that one. And then maybe something close up. It's a nice dramatic option. And out. I think we had a lovely, yeah, lovely back bend. Bring this right in here. Yep. And put that at the end with our end one. So bring the volume of this down because we want it continue, to continue into the track. So let's just watch how that how that happens. Full screen up. I, I feel like I wouldn't add on much to it. I would probably just fine tune it. Um, but at the end of the day, I am really satisfied with it. I am really, really happy with how it turned out. So I'm saying I might even use another clip before, so I have what's kind of known as a cutaway. So as he's talking, have some sort of cutaway here that begins before he finishes speaking. So let's just see how that goes. So 
wouldn't probably just fine tune it. Um, but at the end of the day, I am really satisfied with it. I am really, really happy with how it turned out. So what I'd probably do is bring this in a little bit more, maybe I'm a little bit shorter. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. So it's starting to become a thing. So these transitions here, so this, because this is closed, you can't see where the J-cut still lies, but if I double click it here, so we have got this dip out and back in again, just as this moment happens. In the same way, you could also use that if you had a moment where, for example, there was clapping that was too loud. I'm not going to use it here, but let's just take one of these peaks. Let's say, for example, one of these peaks was a, was a clap. If I take my option, click to create a few keyframes here, you might use this to create a small dip here just for a moment just so it kind of it reduces the, the height of those of those peaks. Zoom back out and command Z to undo get rid of all this. If you need to get rid of a keyframe at all, it's literally just control click and delete keyframe. But remembering if you do delete a keyframe that the the, the the information for the final cut will still transition from one to another. So if I delete this one, this keyframe is then going to go from here to here. So just to be aware that if you delete it going to kind of ping back into place with that same information. Same thing if I delete this keyframe, it's not going to go back up again and it's going to stay at that level. So the information has, hasn't changed from one to another. So it's just something to kind of bear in mind. One final little note before kind of moving on from, from um, these basic adjustments is that the, the other thing to, to note is that the distance between the keyframes is how fast that transition occurs. So if you want the, um, the sound transition to happen really dramatically and quickly, you have the the keyframes very close together. Again, the distance between the top and the bottom is the difference between a high and a low drop. The distance between um, them side by side is how long it takes for that to happen. So this would be quite a, let's pull this right out so you can really hear that. So it should be a quick sharp drop. It's a quick sharp drop. If we pull them apart, it's gonna be a slow but sharp drop. So the distance between them is still the same, but they're further apart, so it feels a bit smoother. Or it might not dip as much. So it might be close together, but only a little dip, and it shouldn't feel quite as, uh, quite as dramatic. Yeah, so you can kind of have a play with it depending on what your, needs, what your needs are. One final little adjustment you can have, which is quite a useful one as well. So let's add this one, actually. It has these fades out. It's like the smallest uh, promotional video I've ever made in my life. So I'm going to go up here to my uh, transitions and I'm going to go to fade to black. So you have your fade to color. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to extend out a little bit. So it's going to actually fade out to black at the end of this. Yeah, let's work with that. So from here I'm going to then take my sound, drag it to the end here. I've got my snapping as active, that's why that yellow line appears. And I want my sound to fade out as well. So I'm going to delete these keyframes because I'm, you can use this, there's no reason why you can't use this. But I'm going to show you the inbuilt ones. So as with a lot of things in Final Cut, you don't actually see them until the mouse hovers over them. At the end of this clip here, you can see there's a little, a little kind of bead that sort of appears at the end of the timeline. Like in, it's there, and my spirit goes. If you click and grab a hold of this bead, you find there's the point where the, these two arrows appear side by side, to fade out audio. If I click and drag that over to the side, that's gonna create a fade out for my audio. So if you listen to that, going to go out to, to, to um, nothingness. That also works on the way in. If you wanted, you might have a fade in with your audio. So let's listen to how that sounds. So it comes in a bit more gradually. I've also said I'm going to play, replace this original clip because it's a bit of a strange one. have this, I might have this entire bit actually, <laughs> even slightly before, yeah, slightly before this. I'm just going to replace these, uh, these clips here. Bring these down. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's your fade in and your fade out of your audio. Another tiny thing is that you can adjust the type of curve that appears. So this is, you're just going to standard, it's a slow kind of gentle curve out. If you hover over, again, this tiny little bead, and hold control, click, that's your right click option on the mouse, you have different types of curves. So you've got your lean, linear plus three decibels, 
um, and there goes the disc gloss. S Curve is one of the ones I love to use for fade outs because it gives you that really smooth, kind of sleek um, fade out. So that one there, you can see the curve, so it gets really, really gentle and kind of just tapers off at the end. So let's just have a listen to how that sounds. It's just nice and smooth. So let's just watch that whole thing. So create a little 20 second video with a few sound adjustments in. I, I feel like I wouldn't add on much to it. I would probably just fine tune it. Um, but at the end of the day, I am really satisfied with it. I am really, really happy with how it turned out. So there we are. So that's our basic sound adjustments for today, and um, particularly sort of related to making sort of um, promotional style videos. So hopefully that was useful to you. We'll go into more detail with um, things like uh, sound effects um, and some of our adjustments through the audio enhancement boards in a in a later video. Thank you very much.